testimony about Meadowbrook Creek, there is a reason of the four creeks listed in the zoning code that Meadowbrook is one of them, okay, because of the problems that it's caused. The city is on distinct notice because of the litigation that's been going on with Mr. Young. Uh, we can't come back a year or two for now once ground has been broken and say, oh, well, we weren't sure Meadowbrook Creek was going to make things worse. And if you look at their application packet that Mr. Jones has submitted, and I know I said this before, but it bears repeating, the parking, you know, they keep talking about the additional parking, the additional parking. Well, I look at that two ways. That's a double-edged sword, because everybody else who's going to park has to go in and out of that place, and that's where the traffic issue comes up. But second of all, the additional parking is, um, some of it is in the back and is only going to be allowed if you allow an exception to allow them to park within 75 feet of Meadowbrook Creek, which again, the zoning code specifically says you can't. So you really have to think this through because there's certain things, if you approve this, that are strictly going to go against the zoning code. Now, the other thing, um, one of the purposes and objectives of the code it says, is to assist in carrying out the purposes and provisions of the PA Storm Water Management Act. So again, you know, sometimes people try and separate those and say, take that to planning, take that here. The, the zoning law specifically provides for it. I'm just going to speak brief, briefly about traffic. People know where I live. Um, Dan, I sent you a letter that I'm going to ask at the end to make it a part of the record, asking to have this matter sent to the city engineer. Um, I was very blunt in that letter when I said somebody is going to get hurt. I don't like to do things like that, but I do know that the city needs to be put on notice. So if and when something happens, this again does not come back as a shock to anyone when you're adding in apartments, offices, artist galleries, a bed and breakfast, a bar, a restaurant, a coffee bar, and weddings that can hold up to 400 people, okay? Um, real quick on their traffic management plan. Uh, a lot of it, and, and actually Mr. Postius was at the Sitting Planning Commission with Mr. King, and he was actually quite helpful, I thought. He explained to us that additional traffic studies will need to be done, but a lot of the traffic study that has been pre presented to you is absolutely based on hypothetical data. Evidently, they're allowed to do that, but you know, you're, you have to remember, you're going back to the state school for the deaf where there was a very limited enrollment where most of the kids lived there on site. So maybe in the morning at 8 o'clock, my school student's van would come in in, and then maybe at 3 o'clock the buses would leave. Other than that, there was no traffic there. Okay, so the hypothet hypothetical data is just not similar to what we're going to be experiencing if you approve either a variance and or a special exception. Um, very briefly on the noise, again, I thought we were making some progress on small points. I admire that woman who walked up here and again, all of a sudden she got bar hours that were included. They're talking about putting walls up. Um, the noise is an issue that really you can't look back on. I know we talked briefly about the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. Uh, I'm going to quote that later as well. But part of what they're talking about, and I'm hoping each one of you had the opportunity to go up and look at it, is an outdoor courtyard. Okay, so she was talking about her tiki bar. We're talking about a larger outdoor courtyard. Um, the bar in and of itself, maybe we're not going to be able to hear noise in there unless there's a DJ. But whatever's going on in that outdoor courtyard, I can assure you from my house I'm going to hear, but you also heard Judy Mundy and you heard Timmy Doherty at the last hearing. Literally, their door abuts that, and there's no privacy fence. There's no wall. There's no sound buffers. So that's going to be an issue as well with the noise. Um, I believe Mark Seitzinger testified at one of the last hearings the noise ordinance in the city is 11. Well, their events are staying open until 12. They've already told us that. They've already said their weddings are going to stay open until 12. So by the time the people get in their cars, pull out, you know, normally you get that one or two extra songs from the band. So there's going to be issues with noise as well. I very briefly want to go over what Timmy Doherty said because he's not here tonight, but I think it just bears repeating quickly. Anytime you bring a bar into a neighborhood, and I don't care what kind of bar it is, any type of alcohol, you're bringing into it other risks. Um, the woman before me was saying this is a residential zone. You're not going to find a more residential area than out where we live. The homes that abut it are all single family homes. There are a couple apartment buildings that Marywood kids live in. We're going to see without question, and, and Timmy Doherty's been in law enforcement for 30 years, an influx, public intoxication, public urination, um, bar fights, stabbings, God forbid a gunshot. 
And you know, the last thing, my kids are older, but a lot of the people in the neighborhood aren't, and they have younger kids. I don't want to look out at 1 a.m. when kids are waiting for their Ubers and see some young gentleman taking, you know, going to the bathroom there because he's bombed and he can't get back in the restaurant to go. And, and, and some of this might sound hypothetical, but if anyone's been in or around bars, you know that this is exactly what happens. Um, I already spoke about the parking. Like I said, the one area in back, they can only add those extra spaces contingent upon you, granting them ex an exception to park closer to Meadowbrook Creek. The zoning code specifically says they shouldn't be able to park within 75 feet of it. Uh, I want to talk about the burden of proof, and then I'm coming close to closing on some of the legal arguments. Um, we don't believe the burden of proof was met in this area on whether it be a variance and or a special exception. Um, we talked a little bit about property values under the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. It specifically says a variance, if authorized, should not alter the essential character of the neighborhood where the property is located, nor substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of the adjacent property. I mean, again, I, I hope each one of you took the time to drive out there and just see and see what you're looking at and what it's adjacent to. I, the homes that have been in, beautiful homes, families that are multi-generational, people that just stay there and continue to buy and build and put time, energy, effort, and money into their homes. And the zoning code specifically says property values is a factor that should be considered. Now, um, I talked about this at city planning. Unfortunately, we did not have a, have a court stenographer, which was a small point of contention I'll speak about at the end here. Um, but I do want to talk about the special exception burden. Um, and this is under 806G. Uh, a couple of the factors that you do have to consider in the event you're going to allow that is number one, traffic generation. You know, I think it, you don't need Mary Dempsey up here to tell you 68 apartments, a wedding for 400 people, bar, restaurant, bed and breakfast, six separate event spaces is going to increase traffic generation. In terms of truck traffic, quite frankly, we have not been advised, or if we have, I, I apologize, I missed it, where they're going to accept their deliveries. Um, tentatively, there is a dock in front on North Washington Avenue. Uh, if, if they're going to accept them there, that's going to be right in front. I already talked a little bit about noise, dust, fumes, gas, o odor, vibration. Um, those are all things that we're just going to have to tell in time. There's obviously going to have to have better lighting if they're going to have that many people in and out. I'm not really going to get into the amount and character of outdoor storage because I don't think they've, we've talked about that yet. But number, excuse me, letter D, the hours of operation if the use would be close to dwellings. There's no question the use is close to dwellings. There's no question it's within 200 feet of multiple dwellings. And again, the, we have been told that it's going to be open to midnight. I think that's extremely unreasonable to the neighbors. Um, again, my kids are older, but we have senior citizens. I live next to one. Um, you know, you like to take care of your neighbors. You like to make sure everything's okay. People go to bed early. People have to get up for work in the morning. And again, we talked about this previously. Just because you're having a 12 o'clock close time doesn't mean that your waiters and your waitresses and your Ubers and everybody else is out of the building by then. Letter E is the compatibility with the character of the surrounding area. I don't think, you know, when it was a school, it really fit in because it was a, there wasn't much action over there. They built a soccer field that in 20 years, I've only seen people use to walk dogs. Um, the kids had a dance once a year. They'd come down, they'd eat, and they'd go back to their dormitories. And then the final one is the potential of expansion to alleviate existing congestion and parking shortages. I think I've, I've covered that adequately. While there will be additional parking, um, again, that's only if they get that use, which is going to make them work closer to Meadowbrook Creek, which, of course, we object to based on environmental concerns. I'm going to go through this very quickly. This is 118C as well, dealing with special exceptions. A couple of them I already talked about, and I will not repeat myself, I promise. Um, it talks about whether um, other laws will be impacted 
And specifically in this case, um, we talked about them getting a liquor license. There is um, a specific section of the Liquor Control Board Act that says you cannot have a liquor license within 300 feet of a church. Uh, Good Shepherd Church is right on that corner and has been. It's a very active congregation. They hold AA meetings there. Uh, they hold church services, et cetera. So I do believe that if you were to approve this special exception slash variance slash conditional use, there would be conflict with other laws. We already talked about traffic. Safety will not create a significant public safety hazard. I can't stand up here in good conscience and say that to you because I know getting in and out of my driveway each day is busy and someone will get hurt. Stormwater management we already spoke about. And finally, the neighborhood. It will not significantly negatively affect the desirable character of an existing residential neighborhood. It will significantly negatively affect our neighborhood. Uh, going back to my burden of proof, uh, I don't think there's any question. I'm sure Bill and I would both agree on this. Um, on pages 8 and 11, 8 to 11, excuse me, of the Scranton Zoning Ordinance, the applicant, the applicant, not us, must prove that the new use would be less objectionable in compatibility with the surrounding properties. Um, there ha first of all, I don't think there's been any testimony to that effect, but second of all, I don't think there's any question that a bar restaurant is more objectionable than a school which had been there previously. If we're speaking about um, the, because I know we have a we have kind of a dual dual thing here, there variance and or special exception. Uh, this party seeking the variance has to also prove that an unnecessary hardship will result if the variance is denied. I don't believe any of the testimony that came before you supported that statement. It also has to prove that the proposed use will not be contrary to the public interest. I believe a lot of the testimony that we brought forth traffic, noise, um, the hazards of a bar, the safety of children, the busyness of the neighborhood, the character of the neighborhood, you can all show that this use will be contrary to the public interest. Um, real quick, when you take a, a look at the hours of operation, they're opening their coffee bar at 7 in the morning, and they're closing their um, event space at midnight and their bar restaurant. This place is going to be going pretty good all day, okay? There's going to be people in and out of here all day. Um, Section 402 does specifically state that a parking lot shall not be approved where vehicles would routinely be required to move between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. Well, if they're closing at 12 a.m., I think it goes without saying, vehicles are going to be required to move. And again, arguably, you're going to have certain clientele of people, whether it be um, people in the medical profession or students that are going to have to get up and be out by 6 a.m., or some people like to work out at that time. So that section as well is an area that you can look at in terms of issuing a denial. Section 119A, regarding the special exception process, it's designed to allow for a very careful review of uses that have some potential of conflicts with the adjacent uses of area. So again, like this isn't to me just a yes, no vote tonight. <laughs> there's a lot of things that have to be looked at here. And there's a lot of specific sections that apply to the decisions that you're going to be making. Um, Number 1.7 of the zoning ordinance says a statement of why the change would be in the best interest of the city. I haven't heard that. I'm, I don't even know why it's in the best interest of my neighborhood as we stand here right now. And again, I repeat, the burden of proof is on the applicant to prove that the zoning amendment is in the public interest. Um, they also, and I have not heard it, but the denial of the variance in this case, if you were to decide to deny, it would not render this property useless. Okay, again, everyone who's gotten up here, and probably including me, would say some development over there is proper. There's no question about that. But it's a question of what. And then they also have to show that unless they're granted the variance and or the special exception, that there would be an undue hardship and that the reasons for the same would be compelling, substantial, and serious. 
being in the legal world, I can tell you that's an extremely high burden of proof, and I don't think it was met here. Um, we talked about this briefly, and I know Mary Jean Moran, when she has testified in front of you, who was presently a member of one of these committees, Section 101 says that the zoning ordinance exists to protect property values and to protect existing desirable residential neighborhoods from incompatible protrusions. Um, I would argue that the bar restaurant in building number one is an incompatible protrusion. Okay, let me just look at this quickly and we may be done. Dan, you had said that, um, you know, and again, the timing might not be right now, but in terms of conditions, I just think it's so important to go back to it because if this board is thinking for any reason, it's, it's actually the perfect way to protect both parties. It's a chance to give them as a, or him as a developer to say, okay, but we're gonna listen to the neighbor's concerns. And here, we wanna close at a certain hour. We want a buffer, a sound buffer put up for concert, uh, concerts. We want traffic in one way and out one way. Um, you know, listening to the residents' issues regarding safety, regarding the character of their neighborhood. Um, a neighborhood not unlike the ones I'm sure you live in that have tons of children and tons of elderly that we're working to protect. Um, Article 7, Section 701, when it talks about purposes, says that the purpose must be in a manner consistent with the preservation of values within the existing residential and non-residential areas. So I'm hoping that we gave you some food for thought here. Again, we are somewhat passionate about it only because we believe in it so strongly. Um, it wasn't just Sam and I coming up here. You know you were at a few of the first hearings where we, we had that second floor loaded. Um, people are interested and people care. Uh, a couple of final housekeeping matters before I, I sit down. First, I would urge you to, number one, deny the variance. Number two, deny the special exception. Number three, if you're considering um, giving them either or to make sure conditions are protected on the same in order to protect the neighbors. Uh, Dan, I had sent you, and I also copied Mr. Jones, a July 1st, 2019 letter. I can resubmit it at this time. Also asking that the same be sent to the city engineer. I really only did that because Mr. Postius was at planning, and, and he's quite knowledgeable. I mean, it, I don't know a lot of these people. It's not necessarily the type of law I do, but when you run into someone like that and you hear someone like that, you think they may be ad, able to add something you know, to the story. So um, I would ask, number one, that you rule on that, and then number two, that you make sure that's of record for me. Um, the only other thing that I'll ask to submit at this time, and it, uh, I think I might have mentioned it previously, but when we went to the City Planning Commission, there. I had said that I was going to get a court stenographer. Um, there's no doubt that if we lose this, we're going to take it to court on an appeal. So I am trying to create a legal record. Um, Mr. King said that he was going to get a uh, court stenographer. So based on that representation, I did not get one. I did not find out that day until about 10 to 6 when I walked in that there was no court reporter. Um, I was taken aback a little bit because I could have been advised that morning at 8, that day at noon, or really that day at 4, and I could have had a court reporter there. I had, I bet you we had 10 witnesses, and I would have liked to have preserved that record. So basically this letter is going to City Council asking them not to adopt, I, I don't know if there are minutes kept or how it is, but asking them not to adopt what the City Planning Commission has sent out, which I guess was the recommendation, based on the fact that... Um, the regulation was not filed. I'm going to ask that that be, this will be sent to City Council tonight, but I wanted a part of this record again in case an appellate or an appeal has to be taken. Um, I'd like to close by thanking you all for your time. Um, I know this is uh, sitting here listening to all of us when we can get very passionate, but no, it comes from the best depths of our heart. Um, no, we're doing the right thing, and in our hearts we believe very strongly that we are. And um, I thank you for your time and your patience.
don't think I formally requested that the brief be put into evidence, and I'd like to do so. I'm going to object that the brief be made part of evidence. It's full of hearsay and everything else, so it's... it's hearsay is accepted here. Here's and six, I can get up and read the whole thing into the record, no. but it's literally 12 pages. Yeah, yeah, and I would well, for, each line that, it, that involves hearsay. Okay. Um, you can make it part of the record. We'll make it part of the record. But not in evidence. But we'll, we'll make it part of the record. Uh, I think we can try to get to a, a better understanding of everything as we go tonight. Um, you guys are done now at, the, at this point. Are, yes. If there's any other neighbors that want to add something that already hasn't been covered. I, I don't want repetitive. We, 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 we know what the problems are. We know what the anticipations are. Uh, if, if there's anybody out there that has something to add that we haven't covered yet, if you want to come up, that's fine. Uh, is there anybody out there that has something that hasn't been covered yet? Does it have to be something that hasn't been covered? Yes. Because uh, we, we've, we've got a slew of testimony here. Okay, so we have a couple of people that... We gotta swear, are we swearing her in then or? Yes. You raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help yes. you, God? Yes, I do. Uh, name and address, please. Sister Mary Persico, 2205 Adams Avenue, Scranton. Thank you. Members of the board and Attorney Penitar and Mr. King, thank you for your time. I think that uh, what I'm about to say in the beginning will not seem germane to the conversation, but I ask you for your indulgence because I think it is germane to the conversation. In the event that you don't know this, I'm the president of Marywood University. And I would like to talk about the relationship that Marywood University, formerly Marywood College, has had for 104 years with the Green Ridge neighborhood community. We very much love being where we are in Scranton. We love being in the midst of the neighborhood of Green Ridge, and we love the people of Green Ridge. Not only do we love them, but we care very much about them. The IHM sisters founded Marywood University. They were the teachers at St. Clair's and St. Paul's. They founded St. Joseph's Center, which is much older than Marywood University. And for decades and generations, we have educated the people of Green Ridge, the grandmothers and grandfathers, the mothers and fathers, some of the people sitting in this room, and some of the children of the people sitting in this room from elementary school, preschool, high school, and university. We care about the Green Ridge community. And we are very distressed that we are finding ourselves in an antagonistic position with them. Because as you heard in testimony at the last meeting, Mr. Cognetti told you that more than 100 individuals or groups have gone through the Scranton School for the Deaf to see if they wanted to purchase it. When we considered who those individuals or people or groups were, there were at times when we didn't want them to offer us a price because we knew what they were going to do was not going to be compatible with the neighborhood. And we didn't want that to happen because we care about the people of Green Ridge. There was another valid offer and we rejected that offer because we knew that the people of Green Ridge would not accept that offer. That offer didn't even need to have a zoning variance, but we did it because we cared about the people of Green Ridge. This was a bona fide offer. I think it has escalated into an argument that can be solved we're talking about traffic, we're talking about noise, 
We're talking about hours at a bar. We're talking about putting up some sort of um, barrier so that noise can be contained. We're talking about codes and compliances. These things can be solved. And we intend to work with the developer to make sure that they are solved. We would be very grateful and happy to sit down with the good people of Greenridge about whom we care and the developer and say, look, we don't want this bar open until midnight. Let's figure it out. We would be very happy to sit down with everyone to go over everything piece by piece, item by item, code by code, issue by issue, and figure it out. One of our speakers tonight said, let's look at the global picture. They looked at the global picture from the dark side. Let's look at the bright side. People moving into high-end apartments in historical residences. People able to go on a Wednesday afternoon and sit down and have a cup, cup of coffee. People able to walk through a park and sit there and observe the beauty of that wonderful space. And people able to go out for dinner at 6 o'clock at night. I've been in Sibios where there's a bar. I've been in Sambucas where there's a bar. I've been in Russell's where there's a bar. And on and on and on. Now, I wasn't sitting at the bar, but I've been in those restaurants. And at about 9.30, there may be our 15 people left in the restaurant, two people sitting at the bar. Why is this bar going to be any different from any of the other neighborhood bars in Scranton? I think we are making, uh, we're escalating this beyond the need for it to be escalated. What I'm asking for tonight is that you do vote and that you think about that global picture and that you think about how this can enhance the property of this part of the city and that you think about how this will help people. I know for a fact that there are people in Green Ridge who are in favor of this project. I know it because they have told me and because they have written it to you. And I ask you to think about them too because they deserve to have their voices heard as well. And so, yes, I encourage you to vote, and I encourage you to vote yes. And I can assure you that I would be happy because we care about the people of Greenridge to sit down with them, to sit down with the developer, to work on every single issue until it gets to a place where it needs to be, where everyone is happy, and we can go forward with this project. So I, I ask you to do that, and I, I, I trust that you will do what is right for the greater community of Green Ridge, and I thank you for your time. Sister, I, I have a question for you. Yes, Mr. Gaddis. If you're willing to do that, why can't we get these groups together, iron these out before we vote, before we have to come to a vote? I mean, we're not, we're not trying to stall a project or we're not trying to push a project through, but mm -hmm. if, if yeah, this... We would agree to that, absolutely. Let me finish, all right? Mm -hmm. If this would have happened two months ago, maybe we wouldn't have this contentious atmosphere from both sides. I mean, they have a, an excellent project, I feel, that probably does belong there, mm -hmm. but you also have concerns of neighbors that live right there. And, and I feel if this came together two months ago or after October and they're here that, that first time, Maybe we won't be here today. Maybe that project would have been started. So I'm asking you to take the lead. And, and if we don't vote tonight in the, to the next month, get the groups together, work it out, come back with a compromise, and we'll be happy to vote on it that time. But I'm asking you to take the lead on this, because you offered it up. Are you willing to do it? I'm willing to do it, yes. Thank but you. I'm willing to do it. If you were to take a vote, I'd be willing to do it after the vote. Mm -hmm. the, the more time we waste. But well, we're, wa we're, we're wasting time. There's a certain should be allowed to witnesses, especially, I, I can't interrupt any of their witnesses. I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm talking to, I'm just trying to see if we can get to a middle of the road here. It, we're, 
this goes through and everyone's happy that it goes through. And, and I don't think there's anyone here, and I'm not speaking for the board, I'm going to speak for myself. There's anyone here that wants this project stopped, like completely stopped. And I, I say from the testimony I've heard here, I feel the same thing, that no one wants it stopped. They want some compromises. In the first meeting, we, we compromised on that silly door in the front, and then last meeting, it was taken off the table. And, and I, I, I don't get that, why it was taken off the table. We worked it out the first meeting, and it was good to go. One simple thing, and then it was gone. It was taken back off again. And it, it's just small stuff. I, 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 they have complaints that I feel are overboard. I'll be straightforward. And they have complaints that are legit. I, I just like to see we get to the middle of the road someplace and, and move on with this. And, and that's just my opinion. I'm, I hope we can do that. I really am. I, I, I think the loss of time may mean the loss of the project. I, I think maybe we can take the lead in trying to work this thing out. Uh, there, there was one more person that wanted to speak, and then I'll let Mr. Jones uh, wrap up his side, and then maybe we can sit down and try to work through this thing. Okay, let's have the last speaker. Thank you, sister. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Abigail Dempsey, 1809 North Washington Avenue. Thank you. Um, I believe I'm probably one of the youngest people that have spoken at one of these hearings. Um, I do live right across the street from the deaf school, and growing up there, it was a major part of my life, seeing those kids there and playing in the playground in the back. And I am part of the generation that is upcoming and is going to be moving this city forward in the next coming years. People talk about this younger generation that's coming in and all the great things that we are doing for the community. And I want to draw on what Sister just said. I would love to go to Zumo's and have a cup of coffee with her and sit down. And I'd love to see this project move forward in a sense that we can use it for children, for group homes, for other things besides just bars and art museums or whatever it may be. I feel like there is something to be said about the history in that building and what it is there for. And as a 24-year-old, strong, young, independent woman, I'd like to take sister up on that and be able to sit down with her and discuss all the brilliant ideas that could possibly go into that. And I'd love to sit down with even the other attorney and this young lady here and see if they would take into consideration ideas for me. Because I do see myself living in this area into the future and I'd like to see something put in there that would be safe for my kids to come and every, all my other friends and families, children, that we hope to stay here and grow like the past generations that have. Um, I was just, I had a question for um, Attorney Dempsey and Attorney Maloney if you had sat down with um, Mr. Jones here and Hillary and gone over ideas like you had done with uh, Attorney Lavelle. Uh, Mr. Jones and I engaged in verbal communication regarding that. And was there any uh, anything that came out of that that was positive or any kind of agreement? No. Would you be willing to sit down with perhaps an outsider and do something like that and hear other type of ideas? Uh, I'm just going to, I realize there's leeway. Yeah. Uh, I, I would imagine. Uh, we're I, I think we're going to limit it to what's on the table tonight. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe okay. they have their own plans. and. But Sister just said she'd like to sit down with. Uh, but she also said that we can't, we have needs to take a vote tonight because the project would be in jeopardy if we waited another month. So. So we're going to try. We're going to try to work something out here, as best we can, and then and then decide when okay. they'll take a vote. Okay, that's all. 
Thank you. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear to testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Name and address, please. Leslie Christensen, 1738 Wyoming Ave, Scranton. Um, and thank you for giving me a, a moment to speak. And just to follow up on what um, uh, the young lady mentioned, talking about a place for me, um, I moved here. Um, in 2012, I'm a single mom. Um, my kids go to St. Paul's. Sam and I, our kids go both go to St. Paul's. Um, and I had the privilege last year to buy a house uh, in Green Ridge. Um, I bought a duplex. I rent half of it to college students, wonderful Marywood students. I also work at Marywood. Um, I get to walk a half mile to work. My kids walk a half mile to St. Paul's. Um, I um, don't live in the big houses on the main street, and um, they don't come by to look at my, houses, my house on Halloween or anything, but I found a place for me um, there. Um, and it was difficult coming to Scranton because there aren't apartments in great neighborhoods for my kids um, where I can walk to work that are high-end, that are for professionals. Um, they, they don't exist here. But I've lived in eight different cities before moving here. I've lived in Baltimore. I lived in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I lived in Boston. And they would beg for a, a building like this, an opportunity where there's professionals, where there's culture brought into the community. Um, they would beg for a nice coffee shop, a restaurant, a restaurant where you're going to pay $14 for a drink. You're not going to sit there and drink a pitcher down at Andy Gavin's, but you're going to have two nice cocktails and go home. Um, I just think that uh, it's so um, uh, narrow-sighted to not see how this is a huge benefit. And you know, I have friends in Annapolis, all these really great cities that are turning into a place that bring in, brings in young professionals, that brings in uh, you know, art, um, music, um, and the connection with Marywood uh, just down the road, going to a concert, going to the galleries, walking up to the restaurant, having a drink. You know, these are the things you want to enrich your community. And to have young people, my children, I take them up to the art galleries at Marywood. We walk up there. Um, the opportunity to walk them across the street to a show, to have some of my friends that are artists and musicians get, get uh, opportunities to sell their artwork or to play their music there. That's in my community. That's really something for me to be proud of. Just let's consider that. Let's consider that this is going to enrich Scranton. Um, like I said, I'm not from here. I'm from South Jersey. I've lived eight different uh, cities. When I first came to Scranton, you know, I was skeptical about this opportunity. I've grown to love it. The people are wonderful. And we are this close to being a city that attracts those that will invest in this community. And having a place like this around the block, you know, bring my friends here. This is where I live. This is where I'm proud to live. And. Um, and you know, you can stay over here at the bread and breakfast. So anyway, thank you. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Nikki Moser, 15 Connolly Drive, Edwardsville, PA, 18704. Um, I am, for the record, Marywood faculty, so I spend much more of my daylight hours in this neighborhood than I do uh, any part of the day. I also am part of the art fabric of Scranton. I have for the last 10 years run Keystone Ironworks. I've uh, been awarded National Endowment for the Arts Awards. Although I can't quote the statistic right this second, the arts bring to the city of Scranton an enormous amount of revenue. The opportunity for the kinds of live work spaces and the kinds of high-end housing that's being proposed here have been teased out to us over a number of years and Scranton has short-sightedly every time stopped projects right at this point. As someone who grew up near here, lived in New York City for 17 years and is back here, it is incredibly frustrating to watch these opportunities slip between our fingers. The impact 
for what is being proposed. And I have a huge background in high-end, multi-million dollar development projects. Like, I get both ends of the spectrum. But the opportunity that's being presented here to the city of Scranton and to the residents of this neighborhood is huge. And to dismiss it or to not vote tonight and make this move forward is going to result, I am fairly confident, in that building turning into a gigantic ruin that eventually will be bulldozed. We have this amazing group ready to do this great thing for us. We have, as, as president of AFA, which I was for over nine years, every week we could have put artists in live workspaces. They will fill that building. They will have people there who are thrilled to be in that environment and in this neighborhood and in this city. Like, let's stop being a joke for what we get caught doing. And let's start being on the forefront of being in a cultural, educated, excited environment. I, I would urge you to vote for this. I think that it's a project that will, that, that will raise Scranton's, um, uh, I just think it will make the city a much better place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jones, do you have anything to add? Can you borrow the mic? Sure. I know you're aware there's two items here today. One is the special exception. The other one is the uh, variance for it. Uh, I'm not going to go through each one of the points. Uh, I'll just hit them in summary. Uh, you know that uh, Marywood bought it. They all went up. In order to rehab this property, it's $37 million for that. So that particular use came and went. We have somebody now that wants to invest about $14 million. Will it exceed that? Sure, I've heard some of the other testimony on that. There's objective criteria that we have to hit. And we used uh, an architect, a realtor, and a planner for that. We're the only ones that put on testimony for those aspects of it. We have a burden. There are both objective criteria and subjective criteria. Uh, whether we even had the burden on the subjective criteria it is open to question, but we still went forward on each and every one of those points. And you understand this because there's a reality to it. You know, I'm, I'm very good at hitting those points, and I know we've covered them. But the reality is, and, and my best witnesses came from the neighborhood that says, this is, Shepstone said, it's on the cusp of going. I think it's gone. Uh, we've had vandals go through the place, all the uh, arts, all the glass, everything's out of it. The windows are gone. Go through it. It looks like Eastern State Penitentiary. You know the horror house that they have on that? That's what it is. People don't even want to take a walking tour of it. Uh, we had the neighborhoods through it, and some of the people just said, we're not going any further into it. It, it, it really is in that type of condition. It also was a unified project. Nobody puts a half million dollar cafeteria out on uh, building number one to service the second and third floors. That would be like in your home. Your second and third floors are all uh, a restaurant and you're, you're sleeping in the basement. This was a unified project that they had with regard to it. I heard about the stormwater. We all know Mr. King testified to it. Uh, that's part of your land development plan. Is that a real issue? Why, sure it is. Is Meadowbrook Creek in the city of Scranton? Yes. Is it on our property in the city of Scranton? We all know that it's not. You had the maps. We put everything on here. I understand that's a real issue. There's also laws, the laws here, and, 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 and the county also does it. Your pre- and post-development, stormwater development, they have to be neutral. It can never exceed it, or we can't do any of this building. And that's why they have the city engineer go forward with it. Uh, traffic, you know, that is a legitimate concern. We put on the traffic expert, one of the best on the East Coast. And what did she say? We're at 43% capacity for what our driveway is. We're also adding one car for every two minutes. That's a half of car for every minute coming out of this particular facility. And on cross-examination, they were saying, OK, well, we want to know about events. We want to know about the, the peaks. And we have 11 less traffic, 11 less cars 
on what we're putting in there now. We've made it on the traffic, and in order to rebut it, you have to come. And I wouldn't put a witness on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ruin my credibility with the board. But we brought one in that says, yeah, we're below that. We're actually less for that time periods that are in there. Is there traffic on that? It's a well-trafficked road. Obviously, it has been. It's there now. All of these particular uses are there. Uh, with regard to noise, yeah, I, I'm the one that offers it. If they're violating the noise ordinance, uh, you, they get cited for that. The liquor one, I'm the first one that espoused it. You, I've had clients. You lose your license. It's, it's as Mr. King has testified to. So those items are out of there. Uh, our witnesses got on the stand. We're putting in high-end housing. Nobody puts in $14 million, so we're going to lose this by putting a bar out the front. It just doesn't happen. That it's, 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 it, it's beyond. We'd be the ones that would be saying, no, you have to leave or whatever else. This is like Sibios. We've all been at it. We had everybody testify to what it is. There's a family restaurant in that area. There, are there a couple stools in that particular room? Why, sure there are. Uh, with regard to, uh, and Attorney Penetar made a good point. I missed it, but uh, on the uptake, I finally caught it. He had over on North Washington, there is an exit out there. And I think his point was, yeah, maybe use it for emergency use, not use it for primary use. I got that, you know, and I understand that. And that seemed, am I offering that as a condition? That's for you to decide what the condition should be. But I understood what he was saying there. With regard to the uh, primary deliveries, uh, there was a, that came up tonight. Yeah, we, we're adding a new entrance because people wanted that new entrance in our parking area. Yeah, are, is that going to be the primary one? Yes, for that, and we're going to try to coordinate our particular uh, deliveries in there. So I, I, I don't want to take your time because I, I know you're cognizant of those two particular elements uh, that, that are in there. And I, I think, you know, I keep hearing the same ones over. But it's a good project for the city of Scranton. And I don't know, and maybe you see a lot of these because I'm not here all the time, where people are coming with tens of millions of dollars uh, to invest it. And you know, I see the same things in the uh, uh, newspaper, which is supportive of the uh, project. And I, I do think it has uh, great support. So with that, I would ask you to uh, uh, vote this evening because uh, this has been knocking around since last October. So what we could agree to, we've agreed to. Uh, we actually took comments back and we reflected them on the plans. You all have the plans. I put them into evidence so we know what they are. And that was after we heard what they are. Now there are some items in there where you can't get financing. You know, uh, let's live in the real world. I, you, I can't have uh, uh, items where a bank is going to say no, you know, you just can't get it. Nobody's going to put that kind of money in to a uh, project on it. Uh, so I would ask you to go through the testimony, take a look. You know, uh, I believe that we're the only ones that have offered the uses that can be put in there. Secondly, that you cannot use this anymore for those particular uses that are on the project. We all know that. Everybody in this room knows that that's gone. The state left, and they left because it's an antiquated uh, building. They're now up in South Abington Township or whatever that facility uh, is. Uh, Marywood cannot use this. Nobody's going to come in and give $37 million. That would be the, like them buying my home for $37 million. This is not going to happen. That, under the law, says if you cannot use the uh, buildings, you know, in a, uh, a, a reasonable manner, if it's prohibitive, which it is. We had somebody come in and tell you, even to demolish it where the land is over five million dollars. You know, it, it doesn't work. It, you're taking a look at even building number one. I gave you the existing conditions, the way that it is completely cut up, and that fellow gave us some nice testimony. It was made for the uses that we're putting in there. You know, uh, and I believe that you can take all of that and see it. And that other fellow says, use some common sense. This is uh, uh, after 190 people, and, and nobody's taking it because of the extraordinary cost. We have somebody that wants to invest in the city of Scranton. And, and as 
the legitimate concerns come up here and we keep hearing how bad the properties are, that there's people going up there now, that the police have to go up there, that the fire have to go up there. And I think to myself, well, uh, you know, the developer was actually in the room, so uh, the place is, is blighted. It, it appears that it's, it cannot be protected. Uh, it's been empty for, I'd say, over five years, could be close to 10 years now. That's blight. That's what you have now. We have somebody that wants to alleviate that. And it isn't, it's for all of the reasons in your ordinance where you say, okay, is there evidence on all of those points? I'm not going to waste your time because this is the fourth hearing that you've had on it. So uh, they're there. You have somebody that wants to invest in the city and, and something positive for the city. And I would ask that you take your vote this evening, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we can move forward with it. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, thank you. But we'd also ask that with the exhibit that I had the uh, gentleman uh, uh, take a look at, that that be entered into the, uh, okay. the uh, let's, Delmonte report. Let's, uh, thank you. Let's, let's go from here. Um, I'm going to kind of take the lead here. I probably shouldn't, but I will. Because it sounds as though nobody's really totally against the project. They're against some of the aspects of the project. So maybe if we could come to some type of safeguards for the neighbors, uh, we, can get, we can get through this. I mean, every, no, not everybody's going to be happy. Any kind of compromise, not everybody's happy. Uh, but let's see if we could go point by point and, and, and try to get through this. Uh, the, the first one that struck me was uh, the parking within 75 feet of Meadowbrook Creek. Uh, when I looked at the plans, there's about six to eight spots in Scranton, about 17 spots in Dunmore that are within the 75 feet. I'm going to ask you both, which is better, give up those 23 spots? or allow the parking to, as set forth. Please use the microphone. Sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Attorney Dempsey, but I think that the real issue is the stormwater. And um, we had suggested that receiving approval from, of the development site from the Planning Commission, Scranton and Dunmore, and then with that mm -hmm. approval from the Scranton, then you would have your stormwater plan and go from there. So again, if the parking in and of itself near Meadowbrook Creek is not a problem if it doesn't contribute to mm -hmm. the stormwater. You know, if there's a cistern in place, like that's something in the brief I mentioned, you know, if there's a cistern that collects that and then slowly releases it, that's completely different than having to remove all of the parking spaces. We're trying to think of big picture, new mm -hmm. ideas. No, I, I understand. And, and so and I'm, I don't, I'm I, trying to come with, up with no, what no, we and, could and do. So, so I don't know if that's necessarily a question I could answer. Mm -hmm. It's really about the parking is about the stormwater. I, I would, and that's very positive. I would ask Mr. King, uh, is it, would it be correct that if the parking was there, you would have your pre, pre and post water flows would have to be the same? Correct. It, it, any development is going to be subject to our stormwater management ordinance that okay. has criteria. It, it, and actually, it's less because not to get into technical terms but when you start a project you have to count 20 percent of it as being meadow which would be a, a field with natural grass growing in it so you're almost automatically with every project you're removing 20 percent of the stormwater from the calculations so the condition would be following i don't know whether it's a cistern or whether you'd use a french thing whatever and i understand that comes out in the planning process but i guess the condition is is with regard to the parking near meadow Bear creek that it comply with with your stormwater ordinance is that it well i, I and i think there 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 are kind of two separate things the setback from the creek is is is, is this, partially this a stormwater yeah. management but it's also an aesthetic it's also an aesthetic thing to protect the, the creek beds. Uh, I, I think maybe the solution is, if this board's going to approve anything, that they don't touch the parking unless the Stormwater Management Commission says that parking has to be reduced. 
I think that's the law, and I, and I, I think, think that's the law. I, 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 right. I, I believe that that's it, that the project wouldn't get land development approval if it doesn't conform with the stormwater management ordinance. And the stormwater management comes after, if only if this board approves. That's correct. It, that would be part of the land development uh, review approval. Okay. Um, another condition that I'm just writing. They're not in any order. They're just things that came up came up to me. Is there, there seemed to be some worry about us approving the front building and then have the front building sold separately. That, that seems to be a, an issue here. Uh, we can place a condition, while we can't prevent a developer from subdividing a property, we could attach a condition to the allowance of the restaurant, bar, and event space only if the property stays as one, and if it's split, then the uh, allowance would be removed. Uh, they'd have to come back if they want to split it. They'd have to come back for a new set of hearings and a new and a new variance. Um, I, I'm, I'm not foreseeing that this is going to be split, but if we're wrong and they do want to split it, I want to have some safeguards for the neighbors uh, that. Uh, if it is split, then the granting of this special exception slash variance would be revoked for that front building. Okay, you, are you guys following me? That's specific to the liquor license. I'm sorry. That's specific to the liquor license. Uh, now I, I was is thinking that the, the whole, the whole restaurant, restaurant and event space. Okay. Would not be allowed if, it's, if this is going to be split off as a separate entity. Okay, so building number one. The building number one has to stay has to, in conjunction with the yeah. other buildings. And Dan, that's like any other variance we give, that variance would carry over to the potential buyer. To any potential, yeah, okay. yes. Thank you. So just to make sure I'm understanding, I may have, so it would, would then revert back to institutional? Is yes. That when, okay, thank yes. you. Can, can you read whatever? I, I have no authority to agree to that condition. No, and uh, we're not asking for your authority. Yeah. This board may put that as a condition. Yeah, I'm just asking, what is it? We just didn't hear it. Okay. It's if building number one is subdivided and sold separately, the granting of the use for the restaurant bar event space would be revoked. They'd have to come back in for their own variance. The new owner would have to come back in. So the residential space would be separate from everything else? Residential space will be separate from anything else, yes. Okay. Um, all right, let's talk about the noise from the outdoor activities. Uh, you guys went through this on the last case. Uh, what do you think? Let's I, just, just I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, nope. just to review the testimony, that was it. and I'm going to ask a question because we've heard sure. so much. What is the planned hours uh, of the, the, the planned hours for the bar and, and events that will take place in that area? Uh, okay. The the uh, it, it's in the uh, application for the restaurant. It's 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. for the event space. It's 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. For the coffee bar, uh, that's incidental retail, that's 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. How about the outside uh, event space? Is that is that going to be 12 o'clock at night too? You're, you're saying? Yes. I mean, obviously that's going to be a problem for the neighbors. I, I think we got to cut that back by at least an hour. At least an hour. I mean, I've never been to a wedding where it was midnight and I was still at that wedding. Never. Never. Not one time in all my life was I at a wedding till after midnight. 
You know what I mean? Uh, it, it, that's because that's Bob's asleep by then. Um, so just line it up with the noise ordinance? Yeah, I would think 10 o'clock would be... Yeah, I... Again, you don't have to agree to I, it. I understand what you're, you're doing, but, but understand what Sister had told you, too. I, I'm telling you, 10 o'clock is, is... If we're complying with the noise ordinance, uh, we're, we're in compliance with it. And, and I know... And if, if, uh, if there's something outside in the event area, and if there's alcohol, if that becomes a licensed part of it, you lose your license. So that's what that's what goes on to it. You have an enforcement mechanism on it now. I think You're going to put conditions where you know I'm going to say thank you and, and that's that. So uh, you know I, that the, the, you, the hours. Uh, you can the, bring it, it in, inside. What? You can bring it inside. We're just saying the out, outdoor activities. The outdoor close, activity close at ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Yeah, that's well, what the, that's I'm what just going to tell you. So it was very nice that we spent some evenings together. <laughs> okay, the uh, you're doing a disservice to your community, but that's just my opinion. Um, so, Attorney Jones, there's, there's no compromise in that. Am I uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, it 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 doesn't work. You, you're not going to get anybody to do it. You're not going to get financing. It 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 doesn't work. You're not going to get the the high end apartments to go with it. Well, it, what, it, what do you suggest there for an hour, Dan? Uh, Midnight it, is out of the question. Yeah, I, I, first it's out of the question. If I can, uh, do I have that type of authority? No. Uh, did I see uh, other items that went back and forth? Yes. Uh, I I can try to contact the principal, but. Uh, you know, I, I I understand what you're saying, but you're you just talking, Mr. Walsh or, or Mr. Paul Matessa, was it just for the the outside of them? The outside the activities. Outside. Yeah. Okay. Well, That's we'll, where the noise is going to come from. That's where the complaints are going to come from. Are the weddings outside, or is there an no. outside area for part of it? That's what no, we're they're going to vote tonight on. It seems the weddings are both inside and outside. So we just need a minute. So if we can move we'll, to the we'll next come, one, Dan, we'll come, come back, back to, that. to that. We'll come back to that one. Okay. Uh, Somebody mentioned green space being removed and stormwater. That as a big concern. Oh, we already addressed the stormwater. No, no, that's over by the creek. I'm talking yeah. about. She's was that the stormwater? That's, that's all. That's all stormwater that'll be handled. Something about. Yeah, that'll be handled down the road. Okay, so that goes. Uh, the, the next thing is no parking on. North Washington Avenue from traffic light to uh, Evelyn Street. I, 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 I all right. Human, human nature is people are going to park closest do, to the Do entrance. I have any authority for that? No. Does it seem reasonable to me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, you're not going to be able to control, to control that. that is to make that front just entrance, make it no, front door, an exit saying, only. No parking. Yeah, the, the only way to control that is to make that front door an exit only, because people are going to park closest to where they could walk in. So if they have to walk in in the back, they're going to park in the back. I, I understand that condition also. Okay, so we're going to add the condition of the front door being an exit only. So the entrance on North Washington Avenue exit only. Yes. And there was the other two that that they mentioned at the last meeting. Entrance and exit. Uh, well, it, it, is, an, it is an entrance and exit. It is today it's yeah, an entrance and exit. No, no, I'm talking about the other two. There was I forgot I forgot where they were. I don't have last month's. No, uh, no, that's that takes care of the the parking. Okay. Um, on the street, yes. On the street, yeah. Uh, there was a request for events that the traffic shall ingress through North Washington and egress through Jefferson. That, that's a tough one to control. No, uh, and we've had the traffic person in there. We don't have an impact on that. Can't happen. You know, it's, uh, Jefferson is just, I, I think Mr. Gatton's even hit it. It just wouldn't work. This is. If I may, I think the concern was for events. 
that mm -hmm. events are being held, if there's 400 people coming to an event, the circular route is much more clear and less likely to have an accident, and that's common sense. Well, all you're going to do is move the traffic problem from one spot and put it on another spot. Right, in a circular way so that you don't have cars coming and going at 400 cars at the same time. Because when the event would end, 400 people would be leaving, and therefore circular. You know, if somebody's coming in because there's going to be residents, you know, if somebody's trying to get into their place, right. or somebody's going to, at the bed and breakfast, they're not held I don't, up. I don't, and I don't think that you're going to have 400 people at every one of these events, number one. Wouldn't it be easier if they took care of the in and out, let them direct the traffic to which they can make it flow the best way possible? Sure, I, I, absolutely. If that was, um, if I wasn't concerned about seven potential event spaces, which is what they have in their plan. And so when you have seven potential event spaces, you kind of do get, get concerned. And so you have one way, two way. So what if one event is ending and one is starting? You know, those sort of things. Um, that Understand as that, we are but again, about. that that next street up is not all that long. So you're going to take from Washington or Wyoming Avenue? Am I right by saying that? Is it Wyoming or no, Washington? It's, it's North Washington and, right. and okay. Jefferson. So, so the you're gonna, ingress, you're, so you're, all you're going to do by pulling in is nobody's going to be able to come in from any other entrance. So now you're going to back up North Washington Avenue and you're going to do the same thing on the leaving of that where when they come out of event spaces, the people that run the events have to delegate the traffic so that every it keeps moving in every direction. That would be, I, I would think that that would make more sense than to just have one entrance and one exit. It, it has a lot to do with the fire department, it has a lot to do with the police department, ambulances and stuff. If everybody's all jammed up and an ambulance can't get in there or a fire truck can't get in there, now you have a new set of concerns. Right, and that, and that is exactly our fear. And that is why we thought the circular approach where entrance from North Washington and exit onto Jefferson headed toward that weird stop sign place in Dunmore. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? Right. right. I'm telling you it ain't going to work. It's, it's, okay. The street is too short there. You're only going to get, if, what, 18 cars on that road from the cemetery to the stop sign? Right. Absolutely. You'll be backed up into the parking lot again where if people come out and turn right onto North Washington Avenue and go down into, say, Park Gardens or go down into Columbia, it, it, it may alleviate some of that pressure. If I can, the traffic engineer, if you recall, actually identified that, took in for each one of these peak events, factored in all that, used what was conservative. What does conservative mean? It means max them out on everything and even looked at it, explained how people actually leave events and, and that this would, how this works. If, if you can't get in and out, nobody goes there, but said this is the safe way of doing it and we actually drop our trip numbers you know, even during the spike times, and that's, you know, uh, so is it a legitimate concern? But you're 100% correct, and, and that bears out. I mean, none of us are traffic engineers. That's why we brought one. I'll leave that up to you guys. I mean, does that make any sense to you? If you come in one way and out another way, it's eventually going to keep bumping into each other. And I, I, I agree with what you're saying. If you come out onto, what is that, Brewer Road? Is that the name of the road? Jefferson. Jefferson. Dun Dunmore. You could go left up into Dunmore. You could come right back down into North Washington Avenue. I, I agree with what you're saying, but you, you have to have the ability to be able to get out on North Washington Avenue at the same time and so that you could go right or go left. Yeah, that's a function of engineering. We can't create something uh, even during our land development process that doesn't work. That's why the woman came in ahead of time and we spent the money now ahead of time right. and that was touched upon even in planning. And I can't reiterate it enough. The traffic is actually a function of, of engineering. Right. It's nothing. It, it's also, okay. it's also a tough thing to control. Again, human nature, are they going to go out the shortest exit? Right. I mean, it's, it's What good it's is something. it if nobody's going to abide by yeah. it? What's next, Dan? Um, hmm? Every one of us are guilty of it. 
Uh, Mr. Gattins, you had mentioned the one thing about the vestibule. Do you recall that? that they I, I'm had, sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Uh, that, uh, you had talked about the vestibule. At one point, they had agreed to allow entry and exit into that only. And then, can that, Dan, you had talked about that at one point as well, closing off the North Washington exit, making it fire exit only or emergency mm -hmm. exit only, making sure people enter and exit through the vestibule only. I think we, yeah, just, we, just, we, just, that. we just did that. Yeah, I, I have that as a condition. Yep. Um, Am I missing anything, you guys? We got the the hours. The hours. We're waiting to hear from yes. this young woman. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, one. No, I mean, the um, one of our concerns was obviously, um, in addition to bifurcation, bifurcation and selling one. Mm -hmm. is that nothing ever gets started, basically the equivalent of abandonment on the other eight properties. Um, if we could have similar language um, to the one prior and put a cap of maybe, you know, two to five years, if those eight other buildings are left empty for two to five years, then the, the restaurant um, reverts back. Yeah, I can't go to a banker for that, so I appreciate that. Uh, how how this functions is you go, you get your money, nobody's going to loan us money to create a project that isn't going to go. Uh, I believe the testimony was when they mobilize, they're going to mobilize uh, for all of that. Uh, do I have that expertise? No, my mother didn't send me to be an accountant, uh, so I could never do the function of money and why a banker will not give me a dime to do anything like that. So while I appreciate that and why this man wants to put in millions of dollars to do that, he knows what his financing is. He knows he has to mobilize for all of that. Uh, you know, I, 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 Explain your concern one more time to me. Sure. Um, uh, two things. Um, the concern is is that we get into a situation where um, the restaurant and the bar is up and running. And like Mr. Shepstone said, oh, I always mess up his name, I, I apologize, Mr. Shepstone, mm -hmm. what he stated is that it's only a jewel if the, all of it is completed, one through nine. Our concern is is that, you know, something happens and, and you know, again, in this lengthy, ridiculous you know, brief, no, let's, there's, let's assume they're running out of money. You know, the, they're, okay, running out of money, the traffic study doesn't work, the storm water is not working, you know, the bed and breakfast, there's a part in there where you can only have six and they're wanting ten, you know, all these different nuances of the laws that they have to work through. And, and one of it doesn't. What if it doesn't? And then we have that lone bar by itself and everything else is getting abandoned because they're just not worth putting the money into or it's too complicated and they're not worth putting forth the effort. Either one of those cases, we come to that loan bar, which, as again, Mr. Shepstone had said, will be detrimental in our community. And that is our concern. Um, and so if there's a way go, to, to mix it into let, the- Let's go back to where I said if it was sold separately. Let's go back and make, make it sold separately or the other residential buildings are not developed. Yeah, I can't get financing. Understand well, that. I, that, mm -hmm. and I that would, kills so that's not going to hurt you because you got to get financing for the whole thing anyway. It, yes, I, yeah. I, I'm telling you right now. So that's a it, it's a non-starter. Nobody can you can't get a dime for that. It'd be like well, you're you, going. You can't get a dime unless you're going to develop all the buildings. That's that's what you're going in for. Well, I, I realize you do some bank work. So if right. that, if that's what you're. Uh, proposing and you can get us that kind of loan, but n no, you, you can't, you can't, that, that won't go. If, if I could have agreed to that, I would have agreed to that. It, it, that's not how the function of money works. Uh, well, I, think, I think there may have been a confusion, because at first, um, and again, this is after October, we had talked originally about a, a right to reverter, which would then put back with, you know, Mary Wood and some other, you know, positioning of that nature. Um, that is obviously yeah, that, would hurt that financing. Can, that that would hurt financing. financing for <laughs> that I agree. You know, and so you know, we investigated that because I'm not a banker, Mary's not a banker. We mm -hmm. looked into that, we agreed, we took that right off. Mm -hmm. Got it. Money is needed. However, again, the whole project, different type of financing could be done. Yeah, I just can't get it. My, I'm, my developer cannot get that. So if, if you have other ones and you can fashion, you can continue on whatever you're doing. I'm just telling uh, you. I, I don't know. I don't know why. So you have somebody else that's giving you 14 or 30. Mr. Jones, if you're getting financing, 
your collateral is the entire yeah, project. I, I'm just telling you. Yeah, they're not going to give you $14 million, million dollars or $16 million dollars to, to develop one building. Yeah, with they're the, going to give you $16 million dollars for the project. Yes, they, they took those conditions and the principal has said that that doesn't fly. So maybe there's there's a function of money somewhere else uh, other than, you know, out of New York or out of California or even out of Philly or somewhere else. Maybe there's some local pot of money uh, that we don't know about that's going to do it. He can't get that. I'm telling you, he can't get that. So. Uh, would he be willing to testify to that? I would like to it, hear what's what actually is the financing portion, because no, that's uh, one no, thing that we're, 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 we're here for nine months. Uh, I, it, that's we are making a substantial investment in the city. Uh, okay, but if, we're if, trying to we're trying to let you do it with conditions. Yeah, I. Okay, I, you're I, saying I, you everything. We got to protect the neighbors. Yes, I, I'm well. Okay, aware. so that's what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to make you run. We're trying to keep you here. Yes. And but we're going to keep you here under conditions. So let me ask you, is the, the restaurant going to be the first part of this project? Is that the game plan? Uh, as I understand it, what they're going to do is they're going to mobilize in, you know, for everything. First, we have to stabilize. There's blight going on in these buildings. You can't let them go down much further or, or no amount of money is ever going to bring them back. So what are they going to do? They're going to mobilize for the entire project. Do I think that, you know, as a function of money, do they get the first one up? Are you going to take an apartment? Let's assume I did the apartment first and all the other stuff isn't done. It doesn't function like that. So what they're going to do is they mobilize for the entire project itself, but that's in phases. You're going to uh, undoubtedly get building number one up because that's what the attractions go with. Are they going to have the other buildings going? Sure. And do I think that they're all going to, you know, when you turn the key on one, they're all going to open? That's, that just doesn't happen. This is just too too large a project. So uh, do I think it's going to function like that? No. Well, I'm aware of that, how that yeah. operates. What I'm saying to you is how long before number one is done and you're already into building three? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, you, you, that, I understand their fears is that something's going to happen and they're going to pull out after restaurant. The building is done, one, and... Ah, they did a not so good job on number two, so we pulled out. I mean, how how, how do we protect these people from that? Yeah, um, and that's a legitimate concern that you have. So, yeah, that's a legitimate concern that you have. And what I would posit with regard to that is, okay, well then function, what are those particular uses that you're going to have? If you have the hours of uh, operation that have limited that particular building, if you have, let's assume you have uh, the apartments in there, is it, that's a positive thing, you know? Uh, so you're going to have all of that, that, that in there. So uh, I, I don't see that as, as a detriment. I'm, I'm trying to scratch the itch, but I know that I can't commit to the the uh, Well, you can the commit to mobilizing the entire project. Huh? You can commit to mobilizing the entire project. Oh, I can do that. Sure, okay. I can. And I well, can ask for partners. At least gets I'm going to ask for partners on this buildings. that we all sign together on that. that. Because I'm telling you, they told me they can't get the financing for that. It doesn't work like that. So, you know, you, you, you know uh, I understand if I could have done that, I would have done it. But it, it, it it okay, but we could put can't. in that you're going to mobilize the entire project, including the residences, once you start, which is what you have to do anyway. Dan, the one other thing that has come to um, our attention, and I, I, Bill and I briefly discussed this, is the Evelyn Street side of the event center where they're planning on having the concerts and or the weddings is right now a, I call it a black six-foot fence. Um, I think the zoning code can provide for either a six-foot buffer and or wall to be placed there, and I thought Bill and I had preliminary discussions on that. Yeah, we can't put a wall up there. The, uh, just so you're aware of it, the, the, for, for the commitment that the, this gentleman has made uh, to the city, uh, and, and he has great faith in the city, uh, the wall doesn't work. It, you know, even the expense of the wall doesn't work. 
the, 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 the profit margin just is not there. But can you add, uh, with regard to landscaping? Yeah, I, I, and I would imagine that there will be some landscaping in uh, prior to occupancy. Is, is, was that the intent? Instead of a wall, could you put arborvitaes? Yeah, arborvitaes. It's a kind of wish. Yeah, at least that'll. Yes. How about a six foot fence? Yeah, no. You, you, you know what I mean? There now. Right, because you just don't want people to walk off of that property. Oh, yeah. As we you don't want fence. people to walk onto that property. So you're going to have to put something there. Oh, yes. I, there's an existing fence there now. What, I, I, that what they're asking for is something additional behind the fence. Right. Yeah, we have a fence, and I can't imagine. I've seen that fence. I couldn't scale it, but. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they, I, I, some of us in better shape. So then, some type better. of shrubbery is going to go there. Yes, we are. Yeah, a absolutely. So. Okay. Well, um, Hillary, what was the answer? Did you receive an answer for the time? Um, for the time specifically, or for <laughs> yeah, for the also, she events. wasn't sworn in. Does she have to be sworn in? Yes, she was sworn in the last time. Yes. Oh, it stays. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, Yes, he's requesting 11 p.m. Okay, I have a question, Hillary. With the weddings, are they in the building and there's some outdoor space, or is there 400 people at a wedding outside? Um, it would depend if they want to book an indoor and outdoor wedding Does space. Does the intent to have a place that can house 400 people outside alone for a wedding, or just like a cocktail area that's outdoors? Do you understand where I'm going? Um, Yes, I think we're envisioning any sort of like larger size wedding to be actually up in the Dunmore side where there's a courtyard because there's a beautiful gazebo there. Um, we are picturing the outdoor space that's kind of in Scranton and Dunmore that's adjacent to building one to be kind of like an amenity space um, to an inside event. But it also could be outside. I mean, people love outdoor weddings, so I'm not going to say that we're not going to have any outdoor weddings I, there. I don't think you can fit 400 people outside. No, I, there. well, we said before at the testimony, I mean, right. it's going to be up to building code and fire officials and all that right. sort of stuff. Right. So, okay, because like you heard the testimony earlier with just a tiki bar, mm -hmm. there was concern from the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why I'm trying to hone in on: is there 400 people outside, or is there 30 people outside, up to 100 on an average weekend night? On an average weekend night without an event? With an event. With an event. Yeah, like what could they expect on an event night? I mean, really, it's up to building code and fire marshals what capacity you can have there. We're not going to commit to an undercapacity until we have that information. Okay. okay. Thank you. Are you okay with 11 o'clock? Back from they, midnight. They don't, they don't want 11 o'clock. They do. You guys have to decide that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we have to give and take a little bit difference here. on that one. It was midnight. You want 10? Let, what do you say we come to 11 and come to an agreement on that in the middle of the road? Can we do 10 o'clock on the music outside, though? The what? The music? Yeah. Well, I think the... Outside. That's, that is what I asked him about, you know, ending outside events. Because it's going to be noise if there's an outside event, obviously. And he's asking for 11. I think I can probably do 11 on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the rest of the day is 10 p.m. Let's work it then. Put that in storm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to put it in storm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Both sides, thank you. Okay. Is that the end of that, Dan? That's all I have. Do you guys, if you guys have anything else. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think there's anything else. I think. Dan, can you uh, recap those first, please? Sure. Thank you. If we're going to take a vote tonight, the vote would be uh, whether to grant the request with the following conditions. One, the uh, parking within 75 feet of the Meadowbrook Creek will be decided by the uh, stormwater management uh, engineer. And 
will we'll abide by whatever that engineer says. It's not the number of spaces, it's we don't impact the creek. Well, and that's part of the, the study that has to be, you, you've got to get through that after you get yeah, through no, this. No, I, I got that, you know what I mean? But uh, I guess what I'm saying is yours is to grant the variance, but, mm -hmm. but the stormwater component has to be addressed. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it, 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 okay. the devil's in the detail. Okay, storm. The, if building number one is sold separately, then the granting of any use is revoked. Okay, now if we can, uh, what is the input on that? Okay, th this is it. If you can say from the adjacent parcels, and so you understand the reason why, is if they're going to use condominiums within the <coughs> building itself, you know, okay. if you, if you break fine. it up, you know, yeah. so it's it's from, in my, well, they're not in screen. I, well, hold on, I don't understand. Mr. Jones, if you push the push button, you could n not be heard. <laughs> If I can, the concern with it is financing uh, on the project, and that's what I. Yeah, yeah I know, but I, if I can address it this way. I'm talking about it, after the project's done. It, no, it's, maybe there's another way of skinning the cat here. So, uh, what, what was your, if you can, particular? The first one. This deals with the subdivision. Right. So. Bear with me, I'm not a lawyer, so it's a little complicated for me to entirely articulate. But his concern is that if it's subdividing and selling off from a, from I guess the rest of the property, because it's considered one lot, even mm -hmm. though it's in Scranton and it's in Dunmore, right. that would impact what he can do and how he can finance the whole project because Dunmore is a part of that project. Mm -hmm. So if the concern is about abandoning buildings, something we had offered the GRC previously, which may be a better solution, I can't commit to it without obviously calling him, but he has offered it before, is that we start construction on four buildings in Dunmore before we open up this building. Or that if we're subdividing and selling, it has to be from a legal adjacent lot in Scranton so it doesn't impact anything on the Dunmore side. Run that last well, part. I don't see that. Uh, hey, hey. I don't see that's a problem. The, 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 re I, I'm just saying that once the project's done, you can't just sell building number one. Decide, okay, we're not, we don't want to do this project anymore. We're going to sell this restaurant because that, that has the, the highest value, and we're going to walk away from the rest. We don't, that's, what, that's what the neighbors don't want. Okay, this is, this is, and this is, I don't think the board wants that. No, okay. I understand that. We don't want that either. I'm just okay, so then we're on the same page. If, if you can't sell just that front property right, but the separately, was subdivide separately. And sell. so his concern is the word subdivide. Well, subdivide is the general term of if you're going to sell just the front property, you're actually subdividing the whole lot, the whole parcel. Right. Right well, now, so the parcel is one parcel. Scranton and Dublin are all one parcel. No, I understand. This is where it, 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 
get quite intricate, which I don't feel comfortable speaking to. So okay. I don't know if it's best for Bill to call Lance. No, I mean, we're going to put that condition in. last part what that insight was for uh, can you can you read that well, last part of the statement that you read well I think he had they have to call to clarify it if we were to take a quick five-minute recess would that be a problem Dan so they can make their phone calls and that's fine you, you can call a recess for five minutes. Do you, you want, want to take a five-minute recess and we'll, we'll come back to this five minutes can, hey, before, hang on. I, I've asked three times I want to hear that last section read before we go anywhere I, I've asked three times so please Read the last section before we break. The last section says, if building, building number one is sold separately, if building number one is sold separately, then the granting of the use for the restaurant and event center is revoked. They would have to come back into the zoning board. The new owner or the proposed new owner would have to come back here. Well, it's separate, but it's, you can't sell it separately. You can't sell it separately without subdividing it. Yes. You can't sell it separately without subdividing it. I didn't put the word subdivide in there. I just put if, the, if building number one is sold separately. The first time I read it, he said the word subdivide. I didn't put subdivide in there. No, I have it written down for what he said. I'm not trying to overcomplicate things. I just and, and I don't care how you that. sell it. You know, if if it's sold separately, then the new owner has to come in for a new variance. Right. So we're just saying that the only way the variance stands is if the entire Everything parcel if it's, stays if together. it's part of this project. Yeah, it's yes. To, it's to keep building one from being sold off. One more thing. Uh, you said that. Your microphone. You would have buildings one through four completed before you open that restaurant. How did you say that? No, they'd be Start starting four, starting four buildings in Dunmore at the same time as they're doing building number one. So I so think that's what you said. And that, Attorney Dempsey, that was agreeable before. Am I hearing this correctly up here? I think. Mm -hmm. And is it still agreeable from your side, Hillary? That that is that what you just? This is what I've been trying to hear yeah, you say. You guys saw it said that. Ten so. minutes. <laughs> I can call them and check. I don't know if it's agreeable with them together. Let's but just take the five minute recess. Take five minutes, and, and I, I think we're at a crossroads here. That can we make sure Hillary calls everything now? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, one the, the, before we go further, is that the only thing she needs to discuss? Well, that's what we're going to go through and make sure it's one phone call. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's go off the record. Come on up here. All right. We're going to take a five minute recess. Is that a fair to say? The conditions are the number one, the variance for the setback from the creek will be granted subject to stormwater runoff development plan. Number two, the if building number one is sold separately, the granting of the use variance for the restaurant, bar, and event center will be revoked. If I can, if we could add the caveat to that, that we could still subdivide within the building. They can't hear you in the back, sorry. We can still subdivide. If they want to do condos in the building, you buy your, your other one. Yeah. I, I'm, 
Yeah, you're talking about well, that's what I, I, said. again. No, you that, that. You got to come. Really you got to come back here for that one. Uh, is that is that something new that we yeah, haven't you, heard? You, no, you'd have, no, you'd have to come back for that one. Okay. You'd have to come back for that one. Uh, number three, the outdoor event space in Scranton. The hours of operation will be uh, Monday through Thursday. Shut down at 10 o'clock and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 11 o'clock p.m. Number four, the front door building face the front door of the building facing North Washington Avenue will be an exit only door. Yes, and uh, attorney Dennis is wrong clarification. That's the existing door. So we're all mm -hmm. if you want to even say the existing door, it's not the new vestibule. Well. The, the vestibule doesn't face North Washington Avenue, but that's okay. Number five, the certificate of occupancy for building number one is conditioned upon starting at least four buildings or have, having at least four buildings in Dunmore under construction. And number, any four, any four, yeah. And number six is on the Evelyn Street side we would have a six foot buffer with a six foot uh, vegetation uh, starting from the corner of North Washington and Evelyn up to the paved walk, which is near built, nearest building number nine. Yes, that's not two six foot buffers. It's, it's a one six foot vegetation buffer. Right. Well, whatever, whatever vegetation. I, I mean, your map shows vegetation anyway. Yes. So just be vegetation sufficient. Uh, okay, I think we should vote on this as a variance. Well, let's get it done completely. A variance with these conditions. Can we, can we first ask, like, the, I don't want to say the audience, but the uh, residents in the gallery if they're for it or like well i mean that's that's the, the, the we've already heard their testimony these are the conditions both representatives have, have decided okay, so. this okay. these are the conditions we are attaching i'll make a motion we vote on the variances second are the uh conditions yeah, we're, we're going to do it as a variance okay let's do the variance then do we have a second second we have a second so we're voting on this right now as a whole yes as a whole with the conditions I still think there's too many what ifs and too many um, late hours and too many people problems. So I'm, I'm just going to say no. Mr. Palmatessa. Yes. Mr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gaddis. No, not this time. No. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Voted three to two. You've been approved with conditions. Dan, just for housekeeping, I think you do have to vote on the special exception. Okay, let's take a vote on the special exception. You have the variance. What do you need the special exception for? It's, it's hanging there. You want to you want to withdraw it? You want to? I don't have the authority for that. It's just we have to vote. It's there. It needs to be approved. I, I'm not. I'm saying this for your protection that you'd have to have a vote. All right, let's vote on the special exception. Put in motion. Motion. Make a motion. Second. Motion to. We have the special exception. I voted no in the variance, so no in the special exception. Mr. Paul Tessa. Yes. Mr. Marks. Yes. Yes. No. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Voted three to two. It's without, been approved. Without conditions. With the conditions, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I oh, yeah. understood that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.